the more is better. Now, what about social media? You, we're talking about attention spans and sort of how people are consuming information and shows, how they're enjoying different fandoms. What do you think of social media? Is it helpful, harmful? Where are you at on that spectrum? Well, yeah, I don't, I'm not on social media just because I think it's not good for me, <laughs> my sort of mental health probably. Uh, and with the in-betweeners came out before, uh, sort of as social media was yeah, taken yeah, off. it was a weird, so it sort of, it was, you know, tell you, Twitter kind of was getting big at about the same time as the in-betweeners. And um, I feel like the, there was not much of a, I think people have figured out uh, some kind of, an etiquette. I like when social media first came out, it was a bit like, what is it? What is it even for? Um, and um, I remember like Stephen Fry was on it very early and he put out one really witty thing a day and he was like, well, it's for this. It's, uh, it's just you write something down and oh, people seem to be delighted by it. And I was like, oh, it's that. But that only works if you're Stephen Fry. So it you, you doesn't work like that for anyone else. Um, and um, I think there's, as I say, I think there's been a kind of, a kind of etiquette that's kind of evolved for how to do it. But like, it's hard, it's, yeah, it's, um, I think it's just kind of horses for courses, probably. Like, some people can, some people really like it. I also find it quite stressful. Um, I've got a sort of Instagram page, but I don't really sort of do very much with it. I've never really been a big engager with it. And I sort of agree with some, I'm not sure it's, I quite like sort of, I don't know. It's probably a generational thing, you know? James, who yeah. isn't here. Twat, <laughs> dare I say? Yeah, uh, he, said he, he said he hated. He said he hated the show as well. Apparently, he said oh. he said, no. You know, it's a joke. Show. I'm joking. <laughs> no, he really hates the Northeast, is what he said. He won't. He won't set foot in the Northeast. He's made that very clear. He's actually not legally allowed to. Actually, that's. Um, uh, anyway, he, he is on social media and absolutely loves it. So, you know, it's, it's different for everyone. Um, I think it's hard, I don't want to whinge, but it's hard to be famous and to be on social media because you just get, you get a lot of stuff coming at you all the time and some of it might not be nice. So, uh, yeah, I just try and avoid it personally. About you, Blake? Start on social uh, media. Yeah, no, I, I am on social media. I'm very 50-50 with it. Uh, there's some aspects of it that are great, but I do kind of feel like if I didn't feel like I sort of needed it for work-related purposes, right. I probably wouldn't be on it. Um, I think t Instagram's nicer than Twitter. Twitter is a cesspit of... <laughs> Uh, there's younger people in the audience, so I'll stop myself from swearing. Although, I mean, that's why you're here. You've seen me swear loads, haven't you? Um, but, uh, yeah, we, that, that ship has sailed. Uh, big old fucking ship, ship has sailed. Uh, um, but, uh, yeah, so, uh, so I, I think Twitter is, is an awful place. It really divides people, and it's nicer when... That, I, I think there's just that thing of like the rhetoric on Twitter, people getting into debates on Twitter is always just people picking a side and trying to beat down the other side rather than actually listening to uh, any kind of decent argument about something that may not be how they feel about it or whatever. But yeah, I don't know. With you being in the pod, co excuse me. With you being in the podcast business, we talked a little bit about your MMA fan podcast. That's probably something you need to sort of promote on social media as well. So tell us about promoting that and also how the podcast came about. Um, oh yeah, so I do a very uh, niche, random podcast about mixed martial arts because uh, I do a bit of training in that, and I really love it. And I, I watch a lot of uh, uh, MMA. And uh, so, like, Instagram, stuff like that, you sort of need that to reach out to fighters and stuff who we interview. And, 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 I, I, and I love that aspect of it. I do love to being able to reach out to them and talk to them. And, you know, some of these people, men and women, have had these incredibly inspirational stories, uh, hardships in life that they've overcome through martial arts and have then been able to better their lives and, and create a better life for their children in some aspects uh, because they, they do this amazing sport and I mean it's it's grueling and it's yeah. tough and not just the act of obviously fighting but the the training for it the weight cuts things like that I mean there's stories has anyone heard of Paddy Pimblet yeah. Paddy the baddie um so oh, is that Pad the guy that you said was a pussy yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's not sorry, true that's the guy backstage you were saying you thought you could take is that the one <laughs> I think it's, 
if you don't understand, some of these fighters are genuinely quite sensitive people, so you're going to get me in trouble. Uh, but I did not say that. Uh, but no, Paddy uh, is, is a lovely man. He's been on our show a couple of times, but he talked about losing, I think it was 18 pounds overnight to make weight for something. You imagine losing 18 pounds. So it's like a, one, a stone and a bit overnight of just water weight that he lost. What they put their bodies through is... is <laughs> Crazy. Well, no, it's the, they, they lose what's the water. What are you talking about? They, they, well, they go, go into saunas and other things and lose all this water. Like, it's they dangerous. A stone of water. And more, 18 pounds, yeah. Where's that coming from? What do you mean? Well, <laughs> their bodies. You've got a backpack on. <laughs> no, that's, 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 that's what they do. They, they, they drain their bodies. It's really bad for their kidneys, all that's that stuff. Quite, so yeah. it's not, it's not like fun. Take the blood out while you do Might as well. Yeah. You don't do any of that either, do you? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> A lot of sacrifices, I know exactly what you mean. A lot of sacrifices, yeah. Yes, for sure. Well, we're going to sacrifice all of you to the fans here, if that's okay. okay. Can we get some fan what questions? A, what a segue. That, that would be good. wonderful. Yeah, I made it kind of morbid. I don't know what happened there. Uh, we have, is it Kev or Aaron that's going to be? Oh, it's Kev. Give it up for Kev, everybody. Woo! He's got the microphone. We're going to get to your questions here. Feel free to introduce yourself. This is our friend in the red suit. Hello, Hi. sir. Good to see you. Hi. Um, I was wondering, for each of your characters... What do you think it would be like, you know, as they are as grown adults, where would the in-betweeners be now? Would they be married? Would they be single? Or would one of them be dead? What do you think? <laughs> <laughs> I think... I'm not sure how Jay... Should we say Jay's dead? Yeah. Jay's dead. <laughs> Jay's dead. I think Jay's in prison, probably. I don't think... Uh. I, think I don't think Jay has survived the Me Too movement. <laughs> <laughs> I'm <laughs> um, so Jeez. he's out of the picture. Yeah. Um, I mean, what should we do? Do you want to do Will? For, y yeah. Yeah. Any thoughts on Will? I'm not sure. What do we know about Will? He did politics A level. Maybe he's gone, yeah. into, gone into politics. He could be in Westminster. Yeah. Could he? He'd be something sort of inconsequential and boring, like a, a Lib Dem. Yeah. That's what I think. Yes. He's a Lib Dem MP. Or maybe well, he, he's maybe a civil servant. I could was going to say. He might be a civil servant. What about Simon? Simon, I think, feels like he's maybe a teacher or something like that. Um, he's, I mean, he's sort of basically a bit like me, and I think that's maybe what I would be doing if I wasn't. I've got a lot of teachers, a lot of teachers in my family, so like in my family it's like you just end up as a teacher. Um, and um, uh, Probably following Carly around the country. He's got a job at a school <laughs> where, where Carly works. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so that yeah, that's yeah, that's what he's same car probably. Um. Neil. Uh, Neil is probably a wonderful dad to many children from different relationships <laughs> because he didn't understand how contraception works. <laughs> so, but I think he's a fab he's a lovely, caring dad. But he has a lot of kids and he doesn't quite understand how. Yeah. And he works at a Lego factory. <laughs> oh, he loves that Lego factory. They keep going missing, though, all that Lego. I don't know where it goes. <laughs> Hello. Hello. Um, I'm wondering, like, each person, like, what is, like, your, like, favourite scene that you recorded for the series? Favourite scene? Gosh. The one that sticks in my mind the most is when we were on, the, on that little boat. Yeah, that was uh, good. Because there was just a lot going on. So much Blake going on. Blake was punching a fish. James almost killed himself because we had a training uh, briefing about the use of that flare, and James just he, he wasn't listening, yeah. just didn't give, didn't give a shit. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and they said the one thing you're not not but never whatever happens if the flare doesn't work or whatever happens don't look down the end of the flare because it might go off and, and blow your head off. Um, I think they said a flare is like as powerful as a grenade. Yeah, yeah. yeah so. so take one. It, it doesn't work. He just looks directly down it. Then <laughs> Could have, could have died. Really could have died, yeah. Wish he had? We no, wish he was dead. No, no, we love you. We love you. You know, him. if he died, he wouldn't be able to be here with you wonderful people today. Oh, it's not here either. <laughs> but it's... <laughs> um, uh, yeah, that was good, that, wasn't it? I mean, that was, that was a good app. Yeah. Um, what was yours? A moment. Um, I, I always... A, any of the ones where Joe had to do something really embarrassing and mortifying... I mean, obviously, testicle out. Uh, is good. Just a whole day where Joe was walking around with his ball out. Um, he, when yeah. it, even when it wasn't filming, just had it out. Well, the thing is, is like there's a lot of repetition. In, is it out now? 
I can't tell anymore. I've, I've lost. I've, I've don't. You know, it's, it's um, it's got its own agent now, so it's uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's a different Comic Con. <laughs> um, doing photos. <laughs> um, yeah, that was a, a genuinely very memorable day. I wouldn't say it was my favourite, but it certainly that stuck in. That was a challenge for me. I'm quite like, I, I mean, I just say genuinely, I'm I'm quite bad at making eye contact with people. And when we <laughs> had to do that scene, they said, "Pop the testicle out." Um, the audience are there. By the way, Joe was offered a fake testicle, but chose to use his own. I just think if you use so your can't compl- now he's complaining. To me, the he only did, he did have the choice. To me, the only person who deserves less respect than a man who pops his testicle out is the man who requests a fake testicle. To me, he's <laughs> that's even lower down. That that man deserves no respect. Um, they said pop the testicle out, and um, uh, we've got the audience assembled. They don't know the testicle is going to be out because we want authentic reactions. And as I say, I don't really love looking people in the eye anyway. And they said just make eye contact with as many people as you can. <laughs> And the first book I did, he just... Better to look somebody in the eye than look at their testicle, at least. Well, yeah, well, they weren't looking at my eye. (laughs) It's quite hard to make eye contact with them. Um, Yeah, and the first person I did, uh, it just wasn't... I didn't look amused at all. (laughs) So, so, yeah, that was was a day. My goodness, yeah. Blake? Um, uh, uh, This is probably going to sound like a weird answer, but there's uh, an episode where... Um, the, me, you and James are in a toilet like oh, we're nice. hiding in a toilet from the, 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 a little kid beats you up and uh, yeah. and then in the show um, what, no, oh, uh, there no, it the, is. Uh, the, oh. um, the the three of us are like in the toilet like, on the I'm, way here on the way here <laughs> get back kid to beat the up. Um, but uh, I'm sat on the toilet and Simon just opens the door and says what is happening in here <laughs> And for some reason, we couldn't <laughs> film it. We just found th- it, it was this weird thing. Sometimes you're on set, and it's the things that aren't even that funny you find the funniest. And what makes it worse is when the director's <laughs> coming up to you going, guys, can you please stop yeah. laughing? We've got like 15 minutes to complete yeah, the like- day. We really need this. So just whatever you do, don't laugh on this take. Yeah. And of course, every time, what is happening? <laughs> just, oh, we're all gone. Absolutely <laughs> increasing. And we just couldn't film it because we were all laughing so much. So, yeah, I love that. After many years of wondering this question, how much Lego do you think you can stuff up your bum? <laughs> so, firstly, you need to be safe. <laughs> Sterilise it, you know, and make sure you're tying string to it because it gets lost up there, it's painful. <laughs> so, uh, but that's there. the only tips yeah. I'll give you. Are we talking Lego or Duplo? <laughs> <laughs> I feel like Duplo might be nicer somehow, but I can't quite work out how... It, is it, Lego seems so sharp. Experiment in your own way. There's no judgment. But, you know, um, just be safe. Yeah. <laughs> Have you ever just sat down and binged the entire in between us? Well, uh, that's, that's, that's um, a good question. Uh, the answer is no. no. <laughs> uh, for a long time, I actually, because it, it I didn't watch it, actually, for quite a long time. Um, because it's, it, is, it just... I mean, in a way, get over this if you want to be an actor, but it's weird watching yourself. <laughs> I mean, but it genuinely... And it was the first show we'd done, so actually we were almost still at that yeah. point where it was like, oh, is that me? Is that, what my, is that what my face does? Oh, why are they there? They were filming the whole time. Oh, my God, is that my voice? Like, it was like you've been just... Like, it's just a video of you that your friend's taken or something. Like, it, was, it was kind of weird. So, yeah, I didn't watch it very much at all for a long time. I've never binged it. I mean, I... I, 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 I suppose, in a way, before the first series came out, I, they sent us a DVD with it on and I watched a few episodes back to back. And I remember phoning my mum <laughs> afterwards and going, I'm not very good in it. I was rubbish. Oh, I, don't, I don't know if the show's any good. I'm no good. And I was just like, because oh. it's just hard watching yourself, especially like early on. I've got a bit more used to it now. But uh, yeah, early on, it's, it's, it's a weird thing watching yourself. So if anyone is thinking of going into acting and you haven't done much yet, just you have to kind of get over that hurdle yeah. Quite quickly, because everyone else is going to see your face. You might as well see it as well. Um, so yeah. yeah. Hi. Um, Hi. So just a question specifically for Simon. Hello. But before I ask it, are you willing to give the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Oh, God. <laughs> All right. <laughs> uh, so. No. <laughs> I suppose this is the obvious answer. Do we have a Bible for him to put his hand on? I feel like it's needed. So, the in-betweeners. Yes. Or Friday night dinner. 
<coughs> well, Friday night dinner. <laughs> okay, uh, that's... No, look. Not even don't even say it's a joke, man. Not even as a joke. Like, it's not, I, know, I, I love a laugh, but like, not even as a joke. Sorry. Sorry, man. Like, you know me, I love a laugh. <laughs> I love a laugh, man, but like, you know, that's not cool. <laughs> as Joe said, the in-between is the first thing we'd ever done. And uh, it was just something quite sort of magical about making it because yep. we were all young then. Youngish. Uh, <laughs> and the guys that wrote it were also the producers. And they're just fucking all yeah. over the place, to be honest. They really are. They're uh, so unprofessional. They, they much around so much. Like, they got told off. The ch Channel 4 came down after a week of filming and said, You're so f you have to stop fucking around. Because we are so far behind, you know, wasting so much money. This to the producers, like, they're the producers. Because <laughs> the producers were just spending all day essentially pranking us. Yeah. Um, and we weren't really getting anything done. Uh, so it was just so much fun. And making the films as well, uh, it was basically just going on holiday with your friends. Yeah. Uh, and do you, do you find yourself that actually doing shows afterwards, like, you know, that, that, that Friday night bullshit thing? Um, <laughs> That actually doing, doing shows afterwards, I was, it was a bit of a shock to the system because it was like, oh, we're meant to be like on our lines, are we? We're meant to have like learned them and we're just, and we're not, we're just going straight into filming it. We're not having the bit where we muck around first. We're not doing the sort of 30 minutes where we kind of like, <laughs> sort of like. It was a point of pride for James that he, he literally never learned his lines. Yeah. We'd not, he'd come in and we'd be like, for the first scene, it'd be like, Right, I suppose somebody better give me a script. But they, like, we gave you a script months ago. You're supposed to know. Yeah, all I mean, the words. honestly, yeah. Uh, he had the was... line stuck to the bon uh, to the uh, like dashboard of the car at points. Whenever James was in the passenger seat, the lines were just stuck. He used so, to yeah. hide his lines around the set. Uh, he, at one point, yeah. he asked for a hat so that he could just have a hat <laughs> down in his hand that he could look at. Um, just on unprofessional stuff that James did, he um, <laughs> he used to try and wink at me all the time. <laughs> <laughs> during scenes during the scenes like, it doesn't work on TV I just James, spread it out <laughs> so there weren't too many winks in one episode but because we film it all out of sequence just all his winks just ended up in the same episode so there's one episode where Jay's just constantly winking at Simon um, what would he say to you before a take as well oh he'd hey, kind of he'd come up to my because Joe, Joe is quite sensitive and vulnerable I'm quite easily affected by I'm quite easily thrown James found out he would do, he would do, he'd come up to my shoulder really close and be like on my shoulder, just with his chin resting on my shoulder and be like, and I said, um, and I said, what are you doing? And he said he was being a character he'd invented called Matthew Moth. Um, <laughs> that was unhelpful. It was really, it was like, fuck, you know, like, I, it was, I don't like moths. So like, he found out I didn't like moths. He try and make Joe fuck up so many times that he get up to um, take uh, ten takes on on Joe's sh yeah. shot, and then he'd uh, <laughs> congratulate him for making double figures. Uh, yeah. Oh, double figures! Yeah, it was so unhelpful. I actually tried to complain about James um, to the producers, and they were like, "What's he doing?" And I was like, "Oh, he's just doing this stuff where like, like he waves at me, and then he goes, oh, what's that?'" And I turn, and then when I when I look back, he's kind of going like that. And they were like, oh, that's really funny. And then they put it in the show. You know, I was, I, I was being bullied. I said I was being bullied. And, um, but, um, Whenever we did scenes in the car as well, he would purposefully fart just before they said action. So <laughs> there were moments where we were acting through his farts. <laughs> they didn't yeah. smell good. Yeah. Um. <laughs> no, no, that's no, James. James. Yeah. Can I ask a question? Yeah. Hey, oh, hello. Joe. Hey, Joe. Joe it's hello. Nick Frost. Hi. How are you doing? Good. I just wanted <laughs> yeah. to ask you a question. When we did festival together, yeah, was it weird that I spent three hours looking up your asshole? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That. Because we've never talked about it. Yeah. Actually, that that was kind of weird, Nick. Actually, yes. Um, we did a, we had a scene in um the festival, which is a, a film that uh Nick and I did together, where um I had to have a tattoo done. The idea is my my character gets. Very, very drunk and gets a tattoo and can't remember having got it. And then he wakes up the next morning and um, he has to be sort of told what it is because he can't see it. And there's a bit where all the other characters are basically... And, and I think we kind of ran out of time or something. So it was a bit like, yeah, we can't, don't worry, we can't see anything. We can't see anything. Um, and I found out afterwards that basically just the other three actors who were looking at the tattoo could just basically see 
sort of fully out of my ass, which is basically incredibly weird. And um, yeah, I think, yeah, Claudia O'Doherty was there as well. And like, I haven't really spoken to her since. And I think she, it was inc incredible. That's the only time I've ever worked with her. And like, um, I said, can you see anything? And she said, yeah, I think I can see your lungs. <laughs> so yes, it was weird, yes. <laughs> Most like their character and why? Oh, I think. I mean, that's a good question. Uh, we'd have to probably say. I think not you is probably. I'd fair. like to think not me. You're not like a complete. We're not idiot. allowed to say it's Blake. I almost say it's the opposite. We're not allowed to say it's Neil. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I mean, it, it, again, it, it is. I feel like we're Landon is. James in it, but it is James. Oh, I was going to say me. Yeah, no, it's James. I suppose he is a bit. When he says he's not like it, he says he's not like it. But. Um, you know, for example, when I had to dive off the boat in the first film, and I had proper lessons and everything, and I took it seriously, uh, and um, I remember James saying, why are you bothering giving Joe lessons? Like, if it was my character, I'd just turn up on the day and just do it. And I was like, well, I mean, that is exactly what Jay would say. So, I, I mean... I think we are, we are, we are, we're dumping you in it now and it's not fair. I think to be honest, the answer is probably me, isn't it? I think I'm most, I think I'm quite a lot like my character. I mean, he's, I think, uh, it's, it's probably not, I don't think it's you. I don't know. Well, how, how would you describe your character? Weird. Weird. Well, I think he's quite, weird. He's, he's, he's a weird, I don't think he was supposed to be particularly weird, but I think then, like, <laughs> they were like, oh, well, we have to make him a bit weird because, um, I suppose he's quite, he's a little, he's a little, a little bit naive, maybe he's quite sensitive I suppose, but I think I'm maybe I'm a bit of a sensitive person probably. I would so. say so, yeah. Yeah, I'm a bit sensitive. So, yeah. If there was any other in-betweeners character you could be, who would you be? Ah. Oh, um, who else would we be? I'd like to turn the tables on Mr. Gilbert probably. I'd have a crack at Gilbert. Yeah. Um, I, I'd be... I, my favorite, I, I've always said my favourite character actually just is Neil. I think he's got a real sweetness to him. And uh, although like, he's got a real... He's got a sort of innocence to him. So I'd do... I'd be Neil. Um, because also just, I just think also just Blake just did such a terrible job of it. That <laughs> um that is obviously a joke. That's fair. There can fair. be no. A little bit of trivia actually is that James played. They were did. There was a pilot of the Inbetweeners uh, with a totally different cast, except for James, who was in the pilot, and he played Neil in the pilot. He so did. So imagine that alternate imagine reality. That. Weird. Don't think about it too hard, because um. you might go mad. <laughs> so I don't. <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm struggling to to think really. I I, I always liked. Patrice, the French exchange. Oh, yeah, student. that's a good one. Yeah, I'll that's, I'll, I'll yeah. be Patrice. That was a, yeah, that was a good episode as well. Actually, I mean that was where he was chasing us. That was good. Uh, just remembering that episode now. <laughs> Hi, uh, similar question to what Simon got asked before, but for you, Joe. Yeah. In between us. Or fresh meat. <laughs> fresh meat. No, of course not. No, no. I, to be honest, I think I have to sort of second what. I mean, I sort of have to second what Simon says, really, in as much as like, because it was the first, it was the first one. I think both of them for me were a bit like going to school and then going to university, though. Like, the in between is, it was a bit like going to school. Like, we hadn't, we didn't really know what we were doing. I lived with Simon. Like, we'd go, we'd get up in the morning, go to a school in school uniform and then come and be like night see you in the morning so just generally was like going to school and then fresh me actually kind of was a bit like going to university because it was like we we sort of we went out a bit more and like we um uh were sort of away i guess kind of being up in like being up in manchester and like so they they, they sort of curiously did kind of just mirror those kind of life stages for me but i don't think you could ever because it's the first it's the first thing, and I think we were, we were all very kind of raw and quite open with each other in a way that I think you just can't really ever re repeat. Uh, and um, 
Yeah, as I say, there was like, there was, it was a unique show, like the atmosphere, for, for various reasons that were often just connected to it just being, as we've said, like just quite unprofessional and a bit of a shambles, but like it was just a very rare sort of set. So, but I mean, I absolutely, like Fresh Meat is a, a, a brilliant show and I absolutely loved being in it, but there's just something about the first thing that I think is kind of special. You know, the first thing has been special. Hello. Hello. Um, uh, hi. Hello. Oh, hi. Hello. Um, I know you've all sort of moved on with the careers. Um, oh, massively. But <laughs> yeah. Can't you tell? Have we? If, the, um, <laughs> if, if there was like a really good script, would you come back for an in-betweenness project in the future? Oh, it's a big if. And big if. Also, do you have anything coming out sort of with the three of you together outside of the in-betweeners? And thank you for coming to Newcastle. Oh, oh well. it's a pleasure. Thank, thank you for having us. Yeah, thank, thank you for having us. I, th I think we would never, never say never to working together again. I think it's unlikely. Uh, it's not, and it's also just fully not up to us. It's up to Ian and, Ian and Damon who, who wrote the Inbetweeners. Um, but I think it'd be so different now because we're all so old. Like I think what was great about the Inbetweeners is those characters could behave so inappropriately because they were kids, whereas. I think adults doing that becomes a bit sort of creepy and, and <laughs> tragic uh, rather than uh, funny and sweet. I think there's also something about like the plausibility of that mixture of people. Like one of the nice things about school is that you get people who are, re I mean, Jay and Will are very different people really, but they, and I mean, actually they do a bit of kind of backstory at the beginning where they say that Will's come from this posher school. So, but nevertheless, they, they, they're different people. They end up in the same place and and I think there's something really nice about school that you get this you know you this this variety that probably as you get older you tend to kind of focus down and whittle down and then you end up with people who are sort of more or less the same as you um so I think there's a sense of like would that would that group still be hanging around together I mean it's probably you know sad to say but yeah I on the other hand, we, we, I think we all... On the other hand, we, we'd, we'd love to... On the other hand, we'd definitely do it. And, uh, the money. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, you know, in, in all of that notwithstanding, we, yeah, of course we do it. So, yeah. <laughs> but, I mean, I think the reason we do it is actually is just because we, we really do, I think I could say, speak for all of us, we, we really do admire, like, Ian and Damon's writing. Like, they, they, I would have faith in them to deliver a good script. They're just, they're doing other things, is the truth. That's, that's why, you know, that's the, the, the main reason it, probably can't really happen. Blake agrees. Who's next? Hi. Hi. Um, I love the show, but I've yeah. got a question for you. Um, yeah. What's your opinion on the US version of the In Between Us? Oh, yeah. Well, it, it, I, I, think, I think we can say it didn't work. But I, I think the reason it didn't work is, is because there is, I think, in, I think it's a very British show. And like, it's ironic because actually in a way we were bouncing off America really invented that genre of like teen comedy like they did it first and then we so we were you know riding on their shirt tails or whatever i just think there's a sense of loserdom and failure in british comedy that kind of is represented in the in betweeners that i don't think it's not that you i i it was, it was just too sort of glossy wasn't it i feel like Although all those, the cast was just too handsome. I mean, look at us. Yeah, um, I mean, you got... Look at got, him! You've got to cast weirdos. Horrible. You've got to cast, find some weird looking people. The, when they said, the, when Ian and David said, the, the time they thought the show first might work, when they were like, that might actually be funny, is when they just saw the four of us standing next to each other. And they were like, oh, actually, that is quite a funny little one. <laughs> One's quite tall, he's got a weird haircut. Little like, the little one, this guy is quite look, weird. Glasses. Yeah, so I think there's a sense of... Um, uh, I think there's a parochialism to the British show. I think I, I sometimes feel like there's a kind of... S I don't know whether it's just America feels like a bigger and a, in some ways a, a more precarious and a more dangerous a, a country where the stakes are a bit higher, where like it feels like in Britain, although they'll, although they'll fall, they'll sort of be caught somehow. Like They're going to be okay, even though they've messed everything up and even though it, literally everything's failed. And I think... Maybe in America, the idea of a literal, total, abject failure is just not quite as... You're like, oh, God, that might just be yeah. really terrible. <laughs> like, um, we might end up on death row. Yeah, we might end up on like, or Skid Row. But, I mean, I, th I think there's, there's a sense that, like, 
in, uh, probably not even not totally misplaced now, but like in Brit, we, there's still this vague sense that in Britain you'll probably still be okay, like even if you've fucked everything up. And and I think maybe it's that. I don't know. It is a very British show. I just do think it is. I'm not. I'm not surprised it didn't work, and I don't think it's the fault of anyone who was in it, or or like, I just think it doesn't translate that kind of uh, just that sense of it. Do you know? I don't know. Um, yeah. What a, what a long answer. <laughs> Firstly, Lars, as I said, I'm like a massive fan of all of you. Like, Thank you. Uh, Thank you. So I just want to know which scene took the most takes, like because you're laughing so much. <laughs> I think you've... The, the one... <laughs> the, I mean, the one that... You know the one where... Well, you've spoken about the one where you sat on the toilet, which I do think yeah. was funny. You're not really giving that enough credit. It was funny because it's like... Funny. Neil, basically, they're, they're hiding in a toilet and Neil, just because he's got the kind of physical association of it, because he's in the toilet cubicle, is like, well, I have to have a wee then because I can't be in a toilet cubicle and not have a wee. And then he has to sit down for the wee. So when you... And then when... I do think it's funny. Like you, so when Will comes in, like you're on the toilet, and like me and Jay are flanking you. It's like you're a sort of weird kind of urine king, and we're like your two little courtiers, like two little elves, being like, "Oh, we sort of supervise the urination process." And it was kind of it was it was funny, and like that was an amazing day. Like that we were so running out of time. Like and and um, I do remember laughing a lot like that. I also remember not laughing a lot. The one where they, where James came up with his catchphrase "double figures" was where in the first series. There's like a girl that I'm staring at and I think she's staring at me. And then I, and eventually I go over and it's just the reason she's staring at me is because she's like, can you stop staring at me? Um, and um, I actually had a thing like this once when I did an audition where I, I, put, I did an audition and I put it up on Vimeo, which, uh, the video site, and then I was checking to see how many views it got. And the views kept going up. I was like, and if people are watching your take, you're like, oh my God, I, I think I might be getting close because it's been watched like 20 times. And then I go again and be like, now it's been watched 21 times. And it turned out it was just me watching the video. <laughs> so this scene was a bit like that. It was like, she keeps staring at me. She's still staring at me. Let me just check she's still staring at me. And it's just because I'm staring at her. And anyway, I have to go over and walk over. And then like, as I reach her, she says, can you stop staring at me? And I just don't even break stride and just come straight all the way back. And that, that took ages, but I wasn't laughing. Um, I was sort of close to tears. And um, that was when James had double figures. So... That took a long time because James was laughing so much. <laughs> um, but do you remember, what, what, what else did we, um, what else did we waste the, their time? I was thinking about the second film where the second film was directed by Ian and Damon. So Ian and Damon, the writers, but they'd never directed any of the Inbadoons before and they decided suddenly to direct the second film, which we thought was just hilarious because they were suddenly trying to be figures of authority on, se on a set that they'd, where they'd created rules of utter chaos and destruction uh, so we used to make fun of Ian whenever he tried to give us a note uh, we used to pat him on the head and treat him as if he was a competition winner being there yeah. so I remember, I remember the first day of the second film where he was trying to give us notes and we found it really hilarious and we were just pretending not to know that he was the director because it was all, all the rest was directed by Ben Palmer so whenever he was giving us notes we'd be like where is Ben? It's really weird. He's like, very late, because it's day one, it's midday. Like, when is Ben getting here? Because at the moment, Ian's having to give us the notes, which is kind of really weird, because he's just some random guy. Whereas, um, Ben was there, I mean, that was, uh, that was, it was like, it was basically, it was like when the, um, it was like when a child's put in charge of the class, basically. We were like, well, you're not the teacher. That's ridiculous. Like, we're not doing what you say. Um, and I suppose, yeah, that lasted for about the first two weeks of the film, I'd say, but then we, yeah, that was, yeah. It's just us undermining our own show a lot of times, isn't it? <laughs> I can't can't really think of, of much other than the the, the toilet. There was probably loads. I remember they had to. There, there was a few things where we had like, I think I've had what they named a piss rig uh, <laughs> on two for two separate things. Um, that was like this tube with this kind of like pow, powered water pressure thing. Uh, and it was, one of them was an episode where we were at a university and uh, I'm kind of sleeping very close to uh, to Simon and all of a sudden Neil starts wetting the bed and they had this kind of like piss rig off screen like being pressurised and I had to be like, oh no! And then there's this like stream of stuff just like flying into the air. And then the other time I think was in the second film in Australia where um, oh, yeah, that Joe was, yeah. was on his knees in front of me oh, dying for a drink. It's such a classy show, isn't it? Yeah, it's just so, such a classy, so classy show. It's just pure class. Um, there's two separate scenes where he's pretending to urinate on someone. It's just... 
Yeah, and they filled that one with warm tea, I believe, uh, as I yeah. kind of urinated towards your face. It was incredibly um, hot. It was just tea. <laughs> like they just made tea. <laughs> We're in the outback. <laughs> it was just a cup of hot tea. Which is no, no need for it to be hot. No, it was, maybe it was freshly prepared. It was like, it was just, they kept it just boiled. I was like, it was incredibly hot. Yeah, I remember that. Um, so I think they, they always took a bit of time. And uh, yeah, working with, with some animals as well. That was like, there was a dog that, ha- oh God. Squirrel, there was ants, wasn't there? And, and oh God, the ants on James's face. The ants were funny. The, the, was ben, was, ben was directing the ants. Ben, the ants were about to climb onto James's face and Ben was going, okay, cue the ants. And action. I was like, they're ants. They are genuinely ants. You can't, you can't say action. That's absolutely mental. It was like, not yet ants. They're ants. They're ants. They're ants. <laughs> ants, can you not go? They're ants. <laughs> you cannot direct the ants. You simply cannot direct the ants. And the squirrel, he, actually, Ben spoke very, um, Ben is the director. He spoke really warmly of the squirrel. He said the squirrel hit, there was a, just, they try and run over a squirrel. Such a classy show. Um, and, um, the, um, he said the squirrel hit its mark better than we did. <laughs> he was like, he was, like, he was missing coming back. He was like, he had to come back work with us. He was like, oh God, I've forgotten what it was like. So I've just been working with this squirrel all afternoon. He was such a professional. <laughs> it was, um, yeah. So there you go. I don't know how we're ending on that note, but it's awesome. It's That's tremendous. Well, guys, first of all, you guys, the fans have been amazing all day. Great questions for our amazing cast here. Thanks for the memories. Um, any final words for your fans? I'll start with you, Simon. We can go down the line no, just, as uh, we leave it's here. It's been such a pleasure to meet some of you guys today, and uh, I'm so glad that you enjoy our show. Simple as that. Yay! Yeah. Hey. Yeah, I, I second that. Just thanks, thanks for coming over and saying hello. Uh, I actually, as you can tell, genuinely do just like talking at length. Um, and I've, there's been at least a couple of occasions where I can tell that the person who I've been engaging with, has had, they've wanted to leave and I've still been talking. So if that was you, I'm sorry about that. Um, but don't get stuck in a conversation with me. That's all I can <laughs> say. But honestly, like, yeah. Your fans have always been amazing. Thank you so much. It's genuinely, we're very lucky. Thank you. Yay. Yes. Uh, yeah, I mean, can only echo everyone. Thanks so much. It's, uh, it baffles me that the show is still being watched by people that weren't even born when it first aired. Um, so thank you so much for keeping the show alive and loving the show. Uh, thank you for being our friends. Uh, oh, and uh, to throw. the lady that asked the Lego question, please do be safe. It's, you know, it's, it's no laughing matter. Do yeah. be safe with the Lego. Very good advice, you guys. Honestly, the stories are what we live for here. Thank you for your candor and all the memories you've shared with us. Please give it up, Newcastle. Show all the love thank for the you. cast of The Inbetweeners. Yeah. Joe, Simon, and Blake, thank you guys so much. You've been amazing. <laughs>